Hi, this is another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. I'm Trevor Lewis. In this video, I'm going to be using Inkscape again, and this time I'm going to be using it to take an image. Um, this is an image drawn by my, my friend Miss Goodall for our Voyager logo, but uh, you can grab an image off the internet, use a snipping tool, or you can draw a picture on a piece of paper and take a picture of it with your phone and upload it using the Google Drive app and then get it into Inkscape that way. But I'm going to use this picture, and I'm going to turn it into something that my laser can engrave and then cut around the outside. So to do that, I'm going to need to have a copy of this in Inkscape. So I, I use the snipping tool. It makes a copy. I right-click. I choose Paste. So this is with this is a, a pixel image. So if I zoom in, you can see uh, Inkscape is trying to blur out the pixels so I can't see them. But they're there. So the laser can't cut this. Some lasers, you can just throw this right in there, but with our laser controller, it needs a pathway to be able to engrave. So I'm going to make a pathway to engrave. And the way you do that is with trace. I'm going to use trace bitmap. Um, if you're using the, oops, there's my previous video there. Let's hit update. If you're using the uh, the Inkscape extension for, for Chrome, you are going to have to trace this by hand using the Bezier tool right here. But I'm going to switch this to brightness cutoff. And brightness cutoff, what it does is it basically draws a line around anything that's dark enough. And dark enough is set by this threshold right here, 0.45. This number can go all the way down to zero. And see, it got a little thinner there because it's it's very close to black and white here. There's a little bit JPEGing. And it can go all the way up to one. If I get really close, you might be able to see a little bit more of the JPEGing. Let's go all the way to 0.99. Uh, not very much. This image is really good, but if I go all the way to one, everything everything's counted. So this is a good number to, to change if you are using a uh, image that is not black and white, if you're using something that is a darker color on a lighter background. I'm gonna use brightness cutoff and I'm gonna hit okay. It doesn't look like anything's changed, but what's actually changed is I get uh, a vector image and I still have my raster image. And it can be hard to tell the difference between them, but if I go down to my color bar and I click on a color and it doesn't change, guess what? that is the raster image because it doesn't have an inside and an outside. But if I click on this and I click on a different color, it has an inside and outside. I can also zoom in here and you can see my lines are perfectly crisp no matter how long I zoom in because what they actually are is it's turned it into these nodes that are attached by lines. So now the laser knows what to color inside of if it's going to engrave or what to cut along if it's not going to engrave. So if I was going to cut this out on the laser, um, this ear piece right here you can see is not attached to the rest so that would cut out and just fall out separately the rest of it's pretty well attached but there, any image where you have things that are disattached really would probably be better with an engrave so more complicated images are often better to be engraved so to engrave this on my laser our laser has color settings for different powers so we have set black which is right here set black as a stroke color to mean engrave so if I shift click black now the laser knows, don't cut along these lines, color in between the lines, and it will color in between the lines for me. So then if I want to actually get this cut out of the piece of wood, the larger piece of wood that it's on, I would need another line around the outside of it. So I've got a circle tool and a rectangle tool for that. I'm going to grab the circle tool and just draw an ellipse. Um, you can see it's not quite centered here, but I can always grab the, the move tool and move it. You can see that th there's some settings here that it's remembering from something. My opacity is set to 50%. That's why it's not all the way black. But if I set it to all the way black, it's there. You can see that my fill is actually set to pink, but the opacity, again, is, is not all the way there. So if I set my fill by just clicking on a, a color here, it's not filling it all the way in because it's actually a gradient, it looks like to me, between it between um, between that color and uh, transparent. So that's kind of convenient, but I was trying to show you. There we go. This is what happens a lot of times is it'll remember a color that's filled in so you can't see the inside. The reason I'm showing you this is because uh, when you do this, people are like, oh, I can't see what's going on. There's a couple ways to fix that. You can go to view and go to display mode and choose outline. Now you can see what the laser sees. You can see the laser can't see anything here. That's why we did the tracing. So I can adjust things in this view mode. Or an easy way to fix it is just set the fill to none. The, our laser doesn't see the fill at all. In fact, when I save it as a DXF, it won't even save it. So set the fill to none, just click on none. To set the stroke, I'm gonna hold down the shift key on the keyboard 
and I'm going to shift click blue because blue is the stroke that we used to tell the laser to cut. Now this is a really thick stroke. Some lasers will turn that into engraving automatically. Our laser doesn't. Our laser just uses the color. So this is all set up and if you look here's a piece of paper so you can see how big it is compared to the piece of paper. I can select both and I can hold down the control key and I can scale it to be however big I want it to be when I laser cut it. And you can say I'm not saved here so I need to save this twice. Let's save it once for the laser. When you save for the laser you're going to save it with desktop cutting plotter as the file type DXF. DXF files are the only file types that our laser will take and DXF files will only save the stroke information. It will also only save numbers so you got to make sure your units are set to millimeters because that's how our laser is set. Once that's saved you can see it says wolvie.dxf. I'm going to I'm going to save one more time because I need to save an SVG. If I don't save an SVG, it will make it so that if I ever want to come back in here and change anything, like if I want to change the size of it or if I want to reverse it and use it for a printmaking assignment, I can't open it. It'll all be every one of these little segments will be separate in the DXF. So if I hit close here, it'll say, "Oops, you forgot to save it as an SVG." So I can hit save as SVG. And when I do that, I, I usually use the same name but SVG and when I do all that, what's going to happen is I'm going to have both versions of my file and I'm going to be all ready to engrave and cut this on the laser cutter. So that's it. That's how you use our Inkscape to make something that you can engrave and cut on the laser.